Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another session with one class. My name is Bassam. I'm an engineering graduate, and today we're going to go. We're, today we're going to be going through some popular physics questions at the high school and preliminary university level. So let's get started over here with the first question. Okay, so our first question, let me just double check that you guys are seeing the whole page. Alright, just give me a second over here. Okay, so we're going to start off with question number one. So we're going to look at the question and then look at what the junior tutor provided as an answer and then we're going to walk step by step how to come about uh, the correct answer. So in this question, in order to get an object moving, you must push harder on it than it pushes back on you. If it is true or false, explain. So the junior tutor um, explains, when an object is pushed by a force, its motion is dependent on several factors. It depends on the normal force of the object opposite to the direction of the applied force, the weight of the object, the friction force acting on, on, on it with respect to the ground, the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of the motion. Hence, the statement is false. Only pushing harder will counter the normal reaction, but the rest of the parameters are still left to move the object. So this is um, not a complete answer. The main um, point to understand here is Newton's third law of motion. So write that down. Newton's third law of motion. And then this states for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. So equal meaning the same magnitude, opposite is just the opposite direction. So just looking at this statement here, in order to get an object moving, you must push harder than it pushes back on you. This wouldn't be true because if you push on an object, it will push back on you with the same magnitude force based on Newton's third law. So if we had an object here, we'd have like, FA force applied that you push on the object, the object will push back on you with um, the opposite force. So, um, the other concept here that is important to understand when to get an object moving, what actually has to happen is the applied force has to be greater than the static force of friction. That's what happens, not necessarily this statement. So, this statement is false. The true answer of this statement is um, the friction force. So let me just erase this here. So the applied force has to be greater than the force of static friction. So I'll, I'll say Fs. So the, there's the force of kinetic friction and there's the force of static friction. Static friction is associated with an object that's standing still and kinetic friction is with an object that is moving at a constant velocity or something like that. So here, if the applied force is greater than the static force of friction, that's when you get the object moving. So we'll just put a box around that. So here, correct answer, um, incomplete explanation. So, this statement is false due to Newton's third law of motion. For every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. All right, so we'll mark this as correct because they provide false. So they say, Depends and same is false. So they say they, they give the correct answer, but the incorrect explanation. Let's get on to.